conversation about the unity of the body of Christ. My name is Peter Nelson. I'm the senior pastor at Goshen Baptist Church in Westchester, Pennsylvania. And I'm here with Bob Van Arsdale, who is the care pastor at Calvary Fellowship Church here in Downingtown, Pennsylvania. And again, our topic today is unity, the unity of God's people. And uh, we thought we'd start off by talking to get a, a little bit just about what we mean by that and what, what unity is, what unity isn't. So, Bob, throw a few thoughts at us about that. Sure, Peter. A uh, couple verses that I just, you might be familiar with these. Uh, John 13, uh, 34, 35. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are disciples if you love one another. I think the first part of unity is having an idea of love, mm -hmm. caring for the people mm -hmm. around you. So it ought to be visible to people around us that we're connected in a meaningful way Absolutely. through Christ. Correct. Um, 1 Peter 3, verse 8. Finally, all of you. So he doesn't single out some. He, he says, all of us do this. Uh, live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic. Love as brothers. Be compassionate and humble. And just that first part of that, live in harmony with one another. Mm -hmm. Love, care, be with them. Uh, experience relationship with people. Right. And one of the, the final ones, Psalm 133, verse 1, I think of uh, David as he says it this way, How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. We're told to live in unity. We're encouraged to live in unity. Right. Right, and yet, as I hear you, and all kinds of scriptures are coming to my mind too, I mean, this is really vital, but the people on, uh, in our world, people around us, even sometimes people in the church, hear this word unity, and maybe are thinking something other than what we have in mind here. So, right. like, uh, sometimes people substitute just uh, niceness, liking one another, good company for unity, and yet the unity we're talking about is a focused unity, a unity around Jesus Christ, a unity of, of trust in Christ for salvation, a unity of mission, receiving his great commission to love our neighbors and go into his world. So uh, I think we want to be on guard that the quality of unity we're talking about is, is deep and rich. It's Christ-focused. Yeah. And I know you have some of those relationships. And in my life, with those neighbors, with those people that we really care about, mm -hmm. we'll do anything for them. Yeah. We'll love to, to be with them. We yeah. want to share our lives with each other. And I think that's what the early disciples said uh, in Acts 2.42, that they all had, they were all one. They all cared for them. I think that's where you get deeper into the mm -hmm. needs and share with one another mm -hmm. um, what's important in the body. Yeah. One other scripture passage comes to mind from John 17, verses 20 to 23, and the, the essence of it is that the Lord Jesus prays for his church that the quality and depth of our unity would be like the unity of the Son and the Father. Right. Think about that. I mean, it's consider the, the quality and depth of relationship the Lord is calling us to. So we're talking about this in terms of um, not just the unity that we share with brothers and sisters in Christ within our congregations, but especially we're talking about in relationship with neighborhoods, workplaces, schools, apartment complexes, what it, wherever it is you are, your dormitory, your setting where you're living out your faith, how does the unity of Christ not only characterize our life within our congregations, but our life as the church scattered where we're rubbing shoulders with other believers? Yeah, the question, I, that's the question we came up with. How do we do that? The best mm -hmm. thing that we came up with is you got to get to know your neighbors. Yeah. And the best way that I know how to do that is to walk, uh, get out, talk to your neighbors, uh, especially on beautiful spring days. Uh, when they're out mowing their lawn, go up, talk to them. Uh, if you're in an apartment complex, when they're at their mailboxes, go to them. Um, I don't advocate stalking, but <laughs> I do advocate just going up and being friendly. Maybe it's inviting them over uh, for coffee or going out for coffee. Walk the dog. Walk if you got the a dog. dog. Dog is a great asset. Um, depending on your situation, if you have children and uh, you're out with them in the community, in the neighborhood, if your children are involved in community programs, school sports, school music, drama, yeah. whatever it is, just the 
And these are basic steps, but the practical steps that we can take to get visible and make it possible to meet people in our communities are, are really urgent to take. Right. And there's so many different types of networks around, uh, especially in a development, a townhouse development. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's, it's uh, you like composting. And you can find others who love composting. Maybe it's uh, manicuring the lawn, maybe doing gardening. Yeah. Uh, but look for people up and down uh, your, your road. I, I love how Dolphus said earlier uh, that you write down the names of your neighbors, mm -hmm. that you pray for your neighbors. And then it is the pray, eat, love that you offer them to come over for dessert. You offer them to come for coffee and you love one of them. Mm -hmm. All right, Bob, let's, let's transition a little bit from these steps we've been talking about for meeting other believers. That's really important, but um, frankly, I know of a, a number of believers in my community, and a, a great challenge in front of me is how do you take that deeper? How do you pursue a kind of relationship with them where you're developing a genuine unity of believers in your neighborhood or whatever this setting is. So let's talk about that a little bit. And one angle on that is, well, there are things not to do. Right. The object <laughs> here is not necessarily to uh, persuade the other person to come to your church. That's not the point of this. I mean, you, you've met another believer, they're involved in a church, they're growing in the Lord. It's great. The point is not to get them to come to our church, but to bless them. And in fact, I think you can diffuse some of the angst they may feel by immediately affirming them. Oh, it's great. Tell me more about your church. Great. How are you involved? What are you, how, how is the Lord teaching you through that? Right. That sort of thing. Good. And I think another one of those things you don't do is thump them over the Bible saying that I'm more spiritual than you. Mm -hmm. Oh, how long have you been saved? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, not long enough, you know? Yeah. Uh, judging those things. That's obvious. Uh, but, but you want to get to know them. You want to talk to them. You want right. to uh, share what's at least just some high-level questions. What, what church do you go to? What do you do in that church? What are you involved in? What do you like about mm -hmm. that church? Uh, what kind of ministries do you involve in? Do you, what do you do even in the neighborhood? Mm -hmm. And by sharing your life and sharing what you do, maybe you just say, I just last week prayed <laughs> on each person's house. Do mm -hmm. you know everybody's name? Let me yeah. share that with you. And can we pray together with that? Um, something like that could right. be a great thing. And I think also asking, are they aware of maybe other people in the community who are believers? That You're meeting this Christian as a networking. Well, you want to take advantage of it. They want to take advantage of it. And who else do we know in this community who has a heart? to see people come to meet Jesus. Absolutely. And Peter, I think the one thing that I would recommend for you, for everyone, is to say, you don't have to go out finding five people. Find one, uh, pray for yeah. one, and let build a, a relationship with them so that you can be comfortable with them. You can understand. And will that be next week? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Maybe God will open up the doors in, in a month or two months or three months. But pray about that. Yeah. And that's the part of it. Pray, eat, love. Pray yeah. for uh, a believer in your neighborhood and then get to connect with them. Yeah, the Lord doesn't want to overwhelm you or your family with this. Um, he, he's going to use other believers as well. So he has a part for you to play, a part for me to play. And uh, he wants us to to rest in that and to trust him with it as we reach out and care for neighbors. I was uh, thinking about an example of this that's really practical is an organization called Moms in Touch has been a ministry my wife and I know many women have been very much involved in. It's an opportunity for Christian parents um, to partner with others in the schools and pray for kids, pray for Christian kids, pray for teachers. It's a great way to meet other believers in your community. Comes to my mind. Yep. I just want to give us freedom to say that it's not on just us, mm -hmm. it's just me, to reach the neighborhood. God has put many others, some others, maybe one other person in the neighborhood to come alongside and help. And so it is so important to find that person and to connect with them. I think that is a great picture. Yeah. of the unity of Christ. It, it's beautiful and the Lord is, is building his church and he'll use you and that other person and another family and uh, it's exciting to see where he'll go with this. So we want to encourage you and uh, challenge you in the Lord to pursue the unity of the body and uh, to see where he will lead you 
together with believers in your community as you spread the love of Jesus.